San Diego 6 News in the Morning. Your station for balanced news. You know when you get the water in your ear, Alex, and it's just not sitting well? Well, we're going to learn more about that, right, with a doctor down there, right? We are. Thanks so much, Courtney. Yeah, we're going to be talking about swimmer's ear, surfer's ear. What's the difference? How do you keep your ear clean and safe this summer? Dr. Michael O'Leary here from Alvarado Hospital to help sort the fi fact and the fiction. Lots of stuff that you might not know already. Doctor, thanks so much for being here. My pleasure, Alex. Let's start with surfer's ear, swimmer's ear. Two different things, what's the difference? It's oftentimes confused, but actually they're two very different things. Swimmer's ear is very common. Anybody who takes care of their ear, jumps in the water, is oftentimes prone to this problem. Mm -hmm. uh, surfer's ear really belongs to about three quarters of all the lifeguards or surfers, especially in cold waters like we have here in San Diego, mm -hmm. and their ear bones will actually narrow and cause them significant problems. Best news on both these things, they're both preventable. Okay, let's take them one by one. I sure. guess we'll do swimmer's ear first. Yeah, swimmer's ear is a little uh, a, a elaboration on what we do to clean our ear wax. So the bottom line is we don't need to do anything for that. The recipe is very simple. If you take this home with you, every time you wash your hair, mm -hmm. drag a bunch of suds down, put them in the ear so the shower goes quiet. That's the whole recipe. Just rinse that out, dry it with a towel. If you don't like water in the ear, just blow dry it. That's all you need to do to keep your ears clean. So shampoo in the ear is safe. You betcha. Not only safe, it's great for the ear. The ear likes a wash. If it doesn't get that, the skin builds up, and that's part of the wax problem that we get. But more importantly, anything you do other than that is real problems, and it's a unique aspect of the ear. It's the only place in the body where skin is actually designed for hearing, not for protection. Mm -hmm. So it's extremely delicate. All our recipes of peroxide, alcohol, little tinctures of this or that, vinegar oil, uh, Italian olive oil, all those crazy stuff. And, and the Q-tip, which a lot of people think to clean the ear, you say not a good thing. A disaster. Uh, you'll see your ear doctor many more times and have much more problems if you use a Q-tip. That Q-tip actually scrapes the bad stuff into this delicate skin that's done for hearing and pushes the whole thing down to a really tough place to remove. Candling, same thing, a real mess in the ear. Water shampoo, cheap, easy, works like a charm. Surfer's ear, so many San Diegans, surfers, such a part of our culture. A lot of people dealing with this, and we've got an example, uh, specifically what's going on, right? Sure. Here's the thing, Alex, and the surfing also, totally preventable disease. So it's a genetic proposition. We know that uh, people who have come from the higher climbs, mountainous climates, it's a genetic piece just like diabetes would be or uh, blue eyes, blonde hair. Once you have it, you're going to get it. So what happened in the Ice Age was that this part of the ear here is uniquely attached to bone. Mm -hmm. And to prevent the, the uh, ex cold exposure to the inner ear, the ear bones would actually narrow like my fingers are here. Mm. Now, air is a, is a mild conductor. Water is 10 times more effective. So one year in the water is like 20 years in the Ice Age. Mm. And as a result, surfers, about three quarters of all lifeguards and surfers, especially in San Diego waters, are going to get this narrowing called surfer's ear. Mm -hmm. Now, the beauty is it's totally preventable. So what you want to do is use a wetsuit for your ear. If you uh, use a ear plug or a molded ear plug, better than the one size fits all, but just like for my Bluetooth here, a molded ear plug, if you know you get this thing, you wear that, it's like a wetsuit in the ear. The cold doesn't keep irrigating the ear out. The progression will stop. Another thing, when, when, we're, when we're swimming or surfing, in, in the, we get the water in the ear, that, that feeling. Yes. What exactly is that, and how that's do you a, get it out? That's a great question. Here's what's wild about that. That water is a meniscus. A meniscus is like you get in a wine glass or a wine bottle when you try to get that last drop out, mm -hmm. and it just isn't going to come. So it's surface tension. It sounds like the whole ocean's in your ear, but it's really only about one or two drops. Mm -hmm. So you can do all these tricks of hopping on one side, let gravity right. knock it out, but it's just like trying to get that bottle out. The easiest tip for that is a quick blow dry. If you're in a house or something like that, come out of the shower. Uh, and in 10 seconds, it'll be dry as a bone because it's such a small amount of water. If you're out of the beach or something like that, just be patient, use a towel, it'll evaporate in about three minutes. One other thing, part of summer, so many people are traveling. You go on the plane and then you get that, that feeling like your ears are gonna pop, you can't hear everything, you maybe try to do this. Yeah. What's the way to get, what exactly is going on and what's the way to make that end? Well, that's a physical property we all get. The best way to think of that, Alex, is like a balloon. So blowing a balloon up is a little difficult, as you know, when you start to blow mm -hmm. it up. Letting the air out, it'll just zoom around the room, no problem. When you're flying that middle ear space, which sits right in the middle here where the ossicles are and the eustachian tube, when you're going up, it's exactly like the balloon being let to fly around the room, no problem. When you're coming down, it's the opposite. Air now in the more dense, lower altitude mm -hmm. needs to come into the ear. So you're essentially blowing air in. Now, it's not smart to blow it this way if you can because that's going the wrong way. The whole function of a eustachian tube is to prevent that direction. So what do you do? So yawning, swallowing, chewing gum, and then an over-the-counter recipe works really beautifully, a little afrin spray, only flying. It's terrible in anything else, but for flying, one puff about the middle of your flight is a great thing, and just stay hydrated with chewing gum and water. 
If at the end of the flight you notice you're feeling pain, your job is to get air into the ear. So as long as you know that, if it right. really starts to become painful, get air in. Okay. Uh, Thank you very things. much. Alex, my Good pleasure. Good thing. So many people Into think about it. For more information, go to sandiegosix.com. Click on Hot Topics.